Welcome back to coverage of the Strixhaven Championship. It is round 12. We're into standard. And we are kicking things off in a mighty way, Cedric. One, with Gruel Adventures in the hands of Rath Levy. And two, because we're gonna get chucked into the Jeskai Mutate deck first and foremost. So looking forward to seeing how that one plays out. We haven't actually, though, seen this deck get to do its thing yet. So I'm excited to see if we can get a couple of, you know, infinite turns going here for Maddie Quizma. So, if you remember yesterday, Ailey, you and I were covering a Raphael Levy match in which he went absolutely nuts with Magna <laughs> and Dwarves and Ember Cleaves and Sacrificing Treasures, right? And you saw, you, you saw all of it. You figured it all out and everything, right? Looks like we're joining this one potentially in progress, but you, you saw everything there. Now, I, I'm going to really see, can you see everything with the Mutate deck in the same way that you did with this Magna Gruel Adventures deck? That's the big um, question. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. I know how the <laughs> combo works. And if we get to that point, I can say, yeah, okay, cool. He's got it. Now just don't misclick because there are so many clicks involved in actually getting this deck to go infinite. So prepare your pants for that if it does in, in fact happen here for Maddie Quizma, who's taking a look here at this hand. Okay, so Spike Field Hazards, as, as Monty did mention, very, very, very good against Magda in general. Other cards that it's good against, of course, as well, like Edgewell Innkeeper, but very good against the key card here for Raph's deck. Rest of these cards, you know, they're fine. Prismatic Man, we all know how good that is. Unsubstantiate, totally fine. And then we see what is a fine hand here from Roth as well with multiple copies of Lovestruck Beast, Ember Cleave, Asika's Chariot, and Rimrock Knight. So, you know, you kind of get a feel for like what's kind of going on with both decks. Both decks uh, don't have a ton of lands actual lands in their opening hand, but these uh, modal DFC is proving to be very valuable for both players. Or as I like to call them, splans. Spell lands, you see. Splans. Mm. Ah, Much yes. easier to say. <laughs> so it looks like Rimrock Knight is going to get sent to the bottom of the library here as we are going to kick off from the beginning of the game and we're going to start things off with a forest with heart's desire as the first play for Ref Levy. Passes the turnover and Spikefield Hazard is eyeing out that little 1-1. One -one. But it's going to be a land in this instance for Maddie Quizma. One point of damage, just running in there. And the second copy of Heart's Desire. It's the board along with the Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass for Raph Levy. All right, and Raph's got land number three for Lovestruck Beast on the next turn and the turn after that. Missing a second red source right now for Embercleave, but past that, totally fine and functional hand. So not a bad start here for Raph. For, for Maddie Quizma. Ooh, You're a I true bet. aggro player. What are you talking <laughs> turn, about? Turn three. Is there enough mana for Embercleave? Yeah, I'm just, look, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking right now I need to draw another red source the next couple of turns. That's all. <laughs> Trying to get my opponent dead here. In the meantime, I've got some other stuff to do. Uh, for this blue, red, black stuff at the top of the screen, you know, because it's not aggro. Um, it, 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 a totally fine hand. Here is a spike field hazard. They're going to be killing one of those tokens. Raph does not look thrilled Ooh. to see that. Yeah, Edgewell Innkeeper is very, very nice if you can follow it up with a adventure creature, but it's just going to be Lovestruck Beast for the time being. And Maddie's going to be pressed to try and get that 1-1 off the battlefield if he can't deal with the Lovestruck Beast. Does have Unsubstantiate in hand, that is one of the key cards to the combo, and having it in the graveyard is a good place for a 2-B, so we'll be able to stop the Lovestruck Beast from any shenanigans next turn. This Prismari Command is going to be a key card here for Kuzma as well, and so far as it can draw two cards to make a treasure and make it so that Goldspan Dragon is a realistic option uh, coming up soon. So I don't know if that's exactly where Kuzma does want to go on this particular turn. He is weighing his options at this point, but it is an option, I will say that. Yeah, Prismari Command, kill the token, make a treasure. Seems like a good place to start if we do find a fifth or a fourth land for Quizme. We'll be able to get one of those dragons down. But Seize the Spoils is the go-to for the time being. Making right. that treasure, discarding a couple cards, and uh, finding Rogan Trium. Oh, we actually drew the land, too. That's actually rather fortunate here if you're at, because you can do the you can do the Edgewell Innkeeper, play your land. Uh, I gotta go to the green side, because we're not in the sideboard game, so no need to go to the blue side. Play Ed Play a Love Struck Beast, excuse me, draw a card. Drew another copy of Ember Cleave, less than ideal. Looking for that red source I was talking about a little earlier there, bud. I mean, at this point, doesn't Ember Cleave kind of feel like overkill, considering there's literally nothing on the side of the battlefield? Okay, is you there, like overkill, I get it. Is there such a thing? <laughs> when you say well, there's overkill... There's no such thing as underkill, okay. When you say right. overkill, what do you mean exactly? I'm a little confused. But, but 
there's 12 damage on the board. Well, I mean, we're attacking for... <laughs> see, what we're doing here is attacking for at least lethal. Okay, fine. At least right. lethal next If you've turn. coined overdog, I'm going to coin underkill. Okay. I don't, I don't know what constitutes underkill, but let's go for it. Get that hashtag trending. <laughs> Where's Mari? Come on, gonna take care of the Edgewell Innkeeper, find a couple extra cards here for Quizma, who's gonna need them, and find some interaction in the form of Scorching Dargon Fire to take care of the other 1-1, one, one, preventing yeah. the Lovestruck Beast from attacking. It's actually a pretty fantastic draw there. Finding mm -hmm. uh, finding an untapped land and that Dragon Fire or Unsubstantiate, there is Magda. Uh, not exactly what Raph is looking for here right now, so that's actually a really fantastic draw there uh, for Madi. And so now... You know, he still doesn't have anything much of anything of consequence on the battlefield, but does have Goldspan, Dragon, and uh, Vatarok in hand. So this is uh, this is getting a little interesting because yeah, of the ability to kill this 1-1. One, one. It's getting getting close to uh, some infinite shenanigans. Needs, uh, needs to find his Lord Dracus if he wants to go full ham here. But first things first, let's not be dead. Scorching Dragonfire will take care of the 1-1, one, one, so the beasts are grounded for the time being. And here comes Essica's chariot. Two little kitty cats on the board, and we'll be able to attack next turn. All right, well, I have to imagine it's a good time to go to the Dagron. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get the opportunity to attack, make a treasure, and hand, uh, have unsubstantiate up, and then perhaps the shenanigans begin next turn? Hmm, looks like Maybe? he's thinking against it. Ooh, we're we not going to attack, huh? I would. Well, I guess we're in, we're in the tank here. I guess, I guess the question is, how do we die? Because, okay, so if we... If we crew the chariot, well, I think, okay, you have to, I, I think you almost certainly want to attack just because you get the opportunity to un unsubstantiate something. A 1-1, one, one. yeah. If, there, if yeah. there is a 1-1 one, one and he's got nothing to do against it, I think he's just dead to an attack from the Essica's chariot. Well, what do along I know? With the beasts. What's up, Red Source? Oh, cool. Let's cleave. That's fun. Sweet. So Essica's chariot can be crewed with one of the beasts. They're driving. Or Magda, even. Yeah, this sure, is actually not? this is actually pretty nice, yeah, because you can use Magda to crew one of the beasts, and that's going to give you your other source of red mana. You just want to make sure that you're not messing up here by um, by missing out on double red. But you play Magda, now you crew with Magda and a thing, so then you get a treasure. So this is basically just a free way to get Magda on the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah, so Magda gets tapped, creates another treasure... The kitty car is up and running and swinging in here. Vroom. Gonna make a copy. Of, what do you mean, vroom? It's more like. Meow. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> and the dragon. Oh, wow. The dragon wants to live, I'm sure, but uh, that's gonna be lethal because the kitty car with the cleave is gonna be 10 points of damage along with the second kitty. It's gonna be lethal here for Raph Levy picking up the game in. Unsuspect, well, un, you know, everyone knows that Embercleave just wins games out of nowhere. It's been known to. I, I am to. a little bit surprised by the no attack and unsubstantiate being available via the treasure. Um, I feel like I might just be missing something there. Not sure how how Madi is feeling about that decision on that particular turn, but I was a little surprised by that no attack that turn. Yeah, I think he kind of left himself without any answers to a potential Embercleave or any other shenanigans, so... He would have bought himself a turn. Would that have been enough? Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, because who knows how this Jeskai mutate works? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> he does. He's nine and two for a reason. <laughs> this is true. This is true. This deck is wild. You know, when you think of a mutate strategy, I'm sure people were thinking that a mutate deck is going to have like 20 mutate creatures in there or something like that. That's actually no. not the case here. And as, uh, as Mani Davuti, our teammate, did mention, uh, this deck is performing very well on the arena ladder. It's kind of this weird unknown thing, right? We we talk so much about adventures and companions and all this other stuff in Macquarie and other sets and Strixhaven's impact with expressive iteration. And we forget that Mutate is a thing that yeah. people were definitely pumped about. It hasn't broken through and constructed in a meaningful way yet, but this is really its big first opportunity to do so. Yeah, so go Maddie Quizma. Bring something awesome to uh, the latter parts of this tournament for us. We'd love to see it. But, you know, my little gruel heart is just like, I like smashing things. And that's Raph Levy's MO this weekend. Raph, go smash. Raph loves beatdowns. Oh, yeah. He loves it. He loves a good beatdown. I remember way back when. Wait, I mean, and I mean way back when. Uh huh. When he won back to back. Dare I say it, but I'm gonna extended. That was a magic format. Extended Grand Prix. 
What the heck is extended? It's like modern, but older. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> you new school magic player, you. He won back to back extended <laughs> Grand Prix with five colors zoo. Uh, zoo? So, yes, uh, small animals. That cost one or two mana alongside okay. tribal flames. I'm like speaking a different language to you right now. This is awesome. This is a little foreign to me, but keep going. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> he went back to back. He went back to back extended Grand Prix with uh, with Zoo. Nice. Um, and so I've always loved Wrath be- when after that accomplishment because uh, he he likes to beat down, and so do I. And so do I. Me oh too. no! Extended has been extended. Extended has been deemed a boomer format, boomer which format. means that okay. I am a boomer, and I don't know how I feel about that at all. Oh, we knew that already, but I don't, uh, know, I don't know. I like this. You know, you can still uh, teach some of these zoomers a lesson or two in magic. That's for sure. <laughs> 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 okay, let's get to the game here. We got Jasper Sentinel down on turn one, which is the ideal start for Raf. Unfortunately, no Magda to follow up with here. Has two Rimrock Knights, another Jaspera Sentinel, as well as Lovestruck Beast as the go tos I mean, if I'm in Raf's seat, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to get the most power down on the battlefield as quick as possible. So likely to see Heart's Desire here into a Rimrock Knight without getting the Boulder Rush. Yeah, just remember that with Jaspera Sentinel, you, it does allow you to have some pretty bursty turns, mm-hmm. I guess, for lack of a better term. It's not Land of War Elf, it's not Birds of Paradise, you know, it's not Elvish Mystic in a traditional sense, but it does allow you, much like those mana accelerants do, to let you play a bunch of stuff really, really quickly, and that, and there's some appeal to doing that. All right, so going for the Hall of Oracles here, all of the oh, adventure maybe. spells do trigger, or do allow the counter to be put onto a creature with Hall of Oracles. So... Pretty good addition to the deck, being able to break board stall situations, and it's pretty easy to get that counter as well, just because of the mass of adventure spells in this deck. All right, so we're gonna unsub something, but what are we gonna unsub? Just the token, perhaps? Get out right, of here, one for good. That's that's not a land. Oh boy, another unsubstantiated off the top there. Maddie is in big, big trouble here against this very aggressive deck that just has a hand full of gas. So no one one for the love struck beast. He's gonna hang out and on his adventure for a little bit longer. Just mm-hmm. sentinel number two is gonna make its way down. And here comes big old bone crusher giant. R. R indeed. Luckily, though, we do have some cheap interaction in the form of Redcap Melee to just get rid of this Bone Crusher Giant. He'll deal two on his way out. Is there a land number three? There is not, but Essence Scatter can protect him for a little while longer. Yeah, this is a tough spot because naturally, you know, Maddie's not drawing land, so that's what makes it difficult. But he is drawing cards that he can cast. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're not going to draw lands, you'd love to draw things that you can cast, which is actually what's happening now, as opposed to things that you can't cast. Again, I'll take my raise whenever Watsy wants to give it to me. So, <laughs> that Essence Scatter is actually not that bad of a draw in this no. spot, because it is castable. Yeah, neither is the Unsubstantiate, because if we do see a situation where Rimrock Knight wants to get pushy here with Boulder Rush, we can Unsubstantiate whatever it's targeting, and then blank that spell. So, one less threat to deal with, essentially, an Essence Scatter. Both of our players are the head-scratching variety. That's where all of their magical powers <laughs> yeah, come from. Their, their hands are just both up there. That's fun. I didn't notice <laughs> that. I'm going to do it with them too. You guys can't see me, but my hand's bent over the back of my head. All right, I'll do it too. All right. We'll all get good at magic. Got to find comes... the right line. <laughs> Here comes Rimrock Knights. Is this worthy of an essence scatter, or will we just see a red cap melee from Maddie here? That was line number four for Ref. He's doing a decent enough job of protecting his life total and eliminating the threats that are on the battlefield, but how long can he keep it up for with only two men on the board? Oh, there's the melee. We're going to take right. care of that one. Okay. Let's see. Land off the Land? top. Oi. No. 
Alas, there is one substantiate, one substan ugh, substantiate, unsubstantiate, that's the word we're looking for, as well as the essence scatterer to protect against a follow-up threat here, but this is not looking good for Maddie. Yeah, I didn't know coming in around 12 that we were just signing up for a Despair of Sentinel beatdown, but I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. Elves in standard. Yeah. They can do things too. <laughs> Works for me. One thing about being a classic beatdown artist, it's not so much about what gets it done. It's just about getting it done. Mm -hmm. So these little bozos. Now this is, I mean, look at this thing. Big 5-5 five, five, can't even attack. I mean, might be able to one day. Yep. Let's see. We can, we can play a fun game here. What's more likely, Love Struck Beast attacking or Mutate ever happening? <laughs> We're um, in between the two at the moment. Twitch yeah, chat, I, take your pick. All right, we should get a poll running for them. <laughs> Make this a democracy. My life to see one mutation. <laughs> I haven't seen this deck do its thing once. I'm sad. I want to really bad. <laughs> oh, no. The lands are not behaving, though, and not giving us the opportunity to see it, so... Raph just deciding if he wants to commit the final threat to the board here. Because if there's an Ember Cleave ripped off the top of the library, you know, that's, that's kind of like go time. Man, does he want to play this Rim Rocker? I mean, he's really thinking about it. Probably wondering what does what is, what does Cleavesman have in hand? I mean, we we could see it. There's a Prismari command that, that an untapped land would, that Prismari command looks a whole lot better. You know, unsubstantiate just gets to bounce the Love Struck Beast. I mean, maybe. You know, because if you bounce Love Struck Beast, that means you're kind of turning it on. Yeah, no, so do you want to bounce Despera Sentinel? Yeah, I think so. All right. Let's, let's do that. Let's, oh, yeah. Here let's we make go. make something go away. We are officially in the mud in this game. Oh, boy. And a land. Yes. Okay. There we go. All right. Cool. We're cooking again. All right. So Prismarikamon can do a good job of removing a potential 1-1 off the battlefield. So that's cool. Essence Scatter can take care of a threat if we want to go that way. We're not going to see a creature deployed now because now is not the time to do that as a land is drawn off the library here for Raph. Would love to find some more action. A little bit more gas for this tank would be great. All right, Maddie, come on. Do it for the underdogs. The overdogs have had their day. Sparrow Sentinel beatdown continuing. And he's going to go down to nine. Will we see a Prismari command here in response? Doesn't look like it. Perhaps going to go for the draw on the end step. As Jaspera Sentinel makes its way back down on the battlefield, Rimrock Knight and Shadow Skull Smashing are going to hang out for Wrath Levy. I love Rimrock Knight still just hanging, picking its spot, looking for a boulder rush. Yeah. It's like, I know I'm going to make something enormous. Just got to bide my time. I am so here for it. <laughs> Prismari command is going to take care of the one... Despair of Sentinel, making that treasure token. There is land number four. So finally, we can get Goldspan Dragon down. All you know right, what? All I, right. I'm kind of keen to see this Goldspan Dragon come on down and hold up that Essence Scatter, because then that prevents a 1-1 hitting the battlefield, unless Ref has two in hand for some reason, but this could be... All right, we're going for Vadrock here, it seems. Okay. Decent blocker. Boom. It's got first strike. Could see a mutation here from the Lord Dracus if there's something in the bin, but we don't get to re... Oh, we do get to recast it with Vadrox ability. We're just going to hold up the Essence Scatter for now as a Jasper Sentinel is not what Raph wants to see on top of the library. Shadow Skull Smashing can take care of Vadrock, and there's no answer for that from Eddie. That's, that's a good point. He's still he's still not dead. This love struck beast is just hanging no, it's out, nothing. So. Yeah, it's it's nothing right now. So I mean, there's still a game to be played here. It's not even a, a way to make a great hands cheaper because I don't think uh, yeah, Raph's not even playing a copy of that. So all right, let's get smashing. I'm here for smashings. Wee right. smork. Beat it down. Okay. Can't let that thing stay on the battlefield, so. Mm -mm. That's very, very scurry. The so Vadrock's taken care of. No attack here. We do leave up the Oracle, the Hall of Oracles, though, to put a counter on something. 
So uh, that's going to go on the Jaspera Sentinel to make it a bit of a better attacker next turn. And the second Jaspera Sentinel is going to hit the battlefield. Well, the third All one right. at this point. All right. Is it time Jaspera to... Jaspera be... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it time to go to gold span? It looks yeah, like it might be. Bring out be. the goldie. Let's go. All right. Okay. So what's is interesting it gonna, here... Is yeah. it going to attack this? Well, that, that question was answered quickly. Yeah. Yes. We could follow up here with a mutate because of the dragon making gold or making treasures tap for two mana. The Lord right. Dracus will be able to get a spell back to hand. But Maddie's in a little bit of a pickle here if there's an ember cleave. Or uh, no, a substantial. No, actually, good because so you get the, he's you get the, a good spot. Yeah. Okay, so you get the unsub back and you have the treasure. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We might see we might see combo town very soon if he can keep this up. I so, so want to see this. Vengeful Innkeeper will allow Lovestruck Beast to attack, but there's an unsubstantiated and an Essence Scatter in hand. Yeah, so I just, I just don't see that happening. Mm -mm. Yeah, and Raph, Raph does not seem thrilled about yeah. this, this series of events. It's going to be okay. five points of damage, possibly, though, with uh, the Jaspera Sentinels attacking and the Boulder Rush. So he's getting very, very close to dead, but four is not zero. And also, we're able to put a counter on it if we do this pre-combat. Get in there. Six. Yep. <laughs> I think Auto Tapper misbehaved there a little bit for us. Mm, maybe. Uh, maybe no. no, no, I think it's fine. No, I think no it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah. Now you, yeah, now you do this. You target... Hey, do you want to make it a 3-4 or a 4-3? Versus this deck, I think is what. Well, I guess it would be a three. It would be a four three in combat. Okay, so he's gonna wait. I think I he wants to get the rim. He just wants to get, cast the rim Knight? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just the just the one red mana. All right. Spike field hazard. Awkward. Okay, that takes care of <laughs> one attacker though. That's okay. It's okay. Expressive iteration. First things first. Let's take a look at the top of the library here. There's another Vadrock. Okay, we're getting there. We, we, need gonna, Vadrock, we, we need maybe, Lord Dracus, we need Are we going to maybe combo? Maybe? Maybe. maybe. Okay. Okay. Vadrock, we're going to get you down. No, Vadrock's just going to be on blocking duty, I think. Ah, we could mutate it. Has he got no? One, two, three, four. He mutates that, gets a spell back, gets to cast it for free, targets himself. He might have it, actually. Let's see. If this mutates onto the dragon, he might have it. Oh my gosh, yes, please. Look, all the people want, all that I want, is to see this deck actually do its mutation thing. Yes. And this is a game in which, oh, yep, okay. in, in which Mahdi missed like so many land drops. But here we go. Okay, so target that to yes. make a treasure. And now we're mutating. Yes, so we get to cast a spell for free and we get one back to hand with okay. the Lord Dracus' ability. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see what he goes for here. Reaper's Mark Command is one of the keys, and Unsubstantiate is the other. The answer to the question, Twitch chat, by the way, is mutate before Love Street, Love Struck Beast attacks. So, if that's what you pick, you win. And now this could get this could get pretty good. Okay, so more treasures. Spikefield Hazard comes back to deal with one of the attackers. Okay. I love. I don't. I don't know if you're seeing Raf's face right now. No, no, he's, no, no. Like he's confused. Yeah, because he's no, like, what? okay, all right, like, he's, what's, he's what's setting going up on? for he's setting up for combo. So now he needs to have full control on, so that in response to the spike field hazard on the dragon, he's going to unsubstantiate it, create another treasure token, and then get eight mana off of the dragon. <laughs> okay. So he does that, bounces the whole pile back to his hand. Goldspan dragon will then hit the battlefield again, and he'll be able to mutate again, getting more spells back, and then continue this loop. I think he's got it. Okay, so. When I talked to Paul Cheon about this deck, yes, Cheon was like, "He's got it." There's a lot of clicks. He's got it. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a, a lot, lot of clicks. clicks. Okay. If you, if you think cat oven combo is complicated, I present to you just guy mutate. Okay, so right. we're mutating. Yes. So Prismari command is dealing damage to the dragon. Yep. Which is causing while, you to get more tokens. Yeah, while we're building all the mana. So this is essentially netting you one extra mana because you make the treasure token as well. Okay. Lord Dracus is mana... Um, what's the word? Balanced or whatever. So, you know, it 
Targets the dragon. Uh, man, mana neutral. Let's That's call it mana word. neutral. There mana you go. Mana neutral. There you go. Yep. So that makes another treasure token. So now we're going to get two spells back to hand. Uh, one spell for free, which is Prismari Command, and then the other one is going to be Unsubstantiate. And then we keep doing this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> until we make so much mana that we then turn the Prismari Command towards Raph's face. The face? <laughs> yes. Yes. So that's the loop. It's very, very complicated. Whoever figured this out. Who found this? I don't know. I, I, want to, I want to speak to them and ask them why. Why, 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 what, what did we do to deserve this? <laughs> yeah, right. he's got it. All right, so this is going to happen over and over and over again. Um, he's just going to have to make sure that he doesn't accidentally kill his dragon or misclick. And the important thing is to make sure that you sack your treasures before the dragon leaves the battlefield. Otherwise, you don't get your extra mana. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's when gold spent dragons on the battlefield that they sacrifice mm -hmm. for two. Okay, yep. okay. So now I wasn't keeping track. Last time I think he had like nine mana maybe. So now he's got 10. So he nets himself. Uh, no, no, now he's got eight. I can do math. I think he had seven last time. All so right, now so he's netted himself so now one we're mana. Eight. So, so all that for one mana? Well, plus the treasure on the battlefield. So mm, okay, yes. Okay, so okay. yes, he nets himself one every single okay. loop. So Raph can sit and wait and see how, you know, maybe he'll make a mistake. But considering his record uh, and that he seems pretty comfortable with his deck, I don't think we're going to see that happen. <laughs> so uh, you know that spongebob squarepants meme three hours later <laughs> look at Raph. what what would you do to make an additional mana which is this <laughs> you know i was Five saying to, cards. i was saying to paul when we were trying this deck out i'm like you know what this deck is missing uh, Auburn's Epiphany, so just take some extra turns because I feel like the dragon can just get you dead quicker than this. Make it a little easier. Mm hmm. That's for sure. Here I go again on my turn. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> I'm so, fascinated. I'm, I'm just. It's very well, cool. It's difficult. There's a lot of clicks, and I hope he did his, his clicky warm ups this morning because he's going to get carpal tunnel syndrome at this rate. So I think, okay, so here's here's what I actually think is happening, by the way, because I'm yes. sure some people are wondering, why hasn't Raph conceded yet, right? Yep. I think it's in play, even though Raph Hall of Famer, one of my favorite Magic players of all time, I think Raph is just going, how do you win? Yeah. Right? Like, I think we're in one of those spots where, like, I don't even know if Raph has played against this deck before. It might be a situation where he's like, yeah, I know Jeskai Mutate exists, but I don't really know how it wins or goes off. And that's totally in play. And it doesn't it doesn't hurt him to just go like, all right, I just got to I want to know how this thing actually works right now so I can see it unfold mm -hmm. and then figure out what the heck's going to happen. So. Right. Well, it does look like he's turning his attention to the creatures now. So that is a different step in this loop. Lord Dracus is going to mutate back onto the Goldspan Dragon. And we're going to go and fetch our spells from the graveyard once again. I am curious, like when when the uh, the focus shifts in this loop, because I haven't seen it go that long before. I'm. I love my job. <laughs> I lo oh uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, now we have another mutator, which well, is going to accelerate this. So that's okay. Good so does format. it matter? Does it matter that the timeout was used? Because like now. We're starting to burn. We're starting to, to burn some time, right? Like this yeah. is this is what I was talking to Chion about. Paul was like, "Hey, this thing is a million clicks, and it takes a lot of time. You could very easily time out doing this." Now, I'm assuming that any Jeskai Mutate player who decided to play this deck knew that this was part of what could happen, and that yes. they're fine with it. Certainly seems like that. And the turn is going to pass back to Raf, who gets who gets a go. So uh, let's see what Raf can put up here against this combo. And the cool thing about this deck, too, once you get to this point, it's very good at protecting itself. So even if there was a removal spell or an Embercleave or something, you see the Unsubstantiate in hand. You know, oftentimes it also plays a Jury Shelter to be able to protect the dragons. So, yeah, I think it's <laughs> it's time to get cooking here, Goldspan. Let's do it. You can whack some of the uh, Jaspera Sentinels out the way and just start smacking. Well, folks, you wanted to see Jeskai mutate. Yeah. It's you, doing oh, its oh, thing. Oh, you got it. 
<laughs> we certainly did. You you got it. I got it. We all got it. It is that is. I mean, this deck is a convoluted mess, but it appears to be more effective uh, than I certainly gave it credit for. And for what it's worth, I think in, in this match, let's talk about the known quantities, right? The, Raphael Levy, Magic Hall of Famer, known quantity. Mm -hmm. Gruel Agro, known quantity. Matty Kuzma, really, really good player. Uh, I've covered him on Magic Online events and various other areas. Lesser known than Raphael Levy for obvious reasons, but really good and is obviously sitting mm -hmm. here with the same record. And the biggest unknown, obviously, is Jeskai Mutate. Which is, you know, what the heck is this deck? Yeah. Apparently pretty good, because again, good. even though, you know, we have this ridiculous combo happening right now, don't forget about what happened about like seven minutes ago where it was miss my second land drop, miss my second land drop, miss yeah. my second land drop, okay, find a land and actually come back to come all the way back to now win this game relatively easily. Yeah. I mean, I, there's nothing Raph can do to break this combo up. We're just no. going to move these Jaspera Sentinels out the way and then... Mutate start all over again. I think he's going to be able to start burning uh, Raph Levy out, but we're going to go for the unsubstantiate before combat <laughs> and uh, okay. get some get some more mana. Yeah. Dragon. Mutate. Yep. Make some more treasures. Get a spell for free. Start smacking some things out the way. Sees the spoils is going to help make treasures too. Scorching Dragonfire is nice. Got another Vadrock. Let's just mutate that onto it. Get another spell for free. Add am, another spell for free. I am so glad this is happening right now. I really can't stress that enough. I really, I'm not that, not that Raph is losing. I'm not, I'm, I'm, whoever wins, that's, you know, that's just part of the job. Yeah. I've wanted mutate to be a thing for so long. Cause I think fine. it's a, cause I think it's a cool mechanic. And it like, we're, uh, we're going to remember a for go. the companions. Yeah. And not mutate, and it's Look like, it. mutate should be a thing. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's going upstairs now, down to eight goes Raph. One more mutate here. Gonna trigger three times for all the creatures tucked underneath the gold span dragon. Yep. Don't forget that dragon still hasn't attacked yet, right? We oh, still get a, yep. little, get a little haste going. Yep. We just so, gotta kill, we gotta kill the sentinel that has reach. Yeah, just gotta get that That's out of the all. way. And then uh, this game is gonna go to Matty Kuizma. His time is ticking down, but I think he's gonna have enough time no, in the I... third game. Or Raph Levy's just gonna, you know, take him down. But let's see actually, how we yeah, finish this game off. That's actually a really, really good point, which is the um, the timer the timer aspect of it. Not the timeouts aspect, but the timer aspect of it yeah. is actually really important. I mean, 11 minutes seems like plenty for game number three, but uh, <laughs> Raph, that, Raph, that's how it works, bud. Oh my goodness me. Bravo, <laughs> Maddie. To keep your composure and get through all those clicks, that is how you play that deck, my friends. Wow, wow, <laughs> Jesus wow. gracious. Wow, okay. You can see him doing a bit of a shrug there. That was some intensive work, man. <laughs> so let's let's dive in a little bit to this mutate thing and, and this, uh, th this stuff that Raph has to contend with now, because here's another thing to think about, right? How many times do you think Raph has played against this deck coming into the tournament? Like, I uh, probably maybe once. Right, we're maybe? talking we're we're talking split format tournament, so you got to mm -hmm. prepare for two formats, and then constructed. I'm going to be testing against Salte Ultimatum. I'm going to be testing against the advent the various adventures decks, of which there are many. Maybe mono white, maybe mono red, and I wouldn't be surprised in the testing process where because you know I've I've, I've qualified for these events and, and done poorly in them well enough. Uh, where it's just kind of like, I don't have time to prepare for everything. Do you guys want to test against Jeskai Mutate? Nah, nah, no one's going to bring that. No one's going to play that. Yeah, no Slow one's going to play that. Like, or, or people will play it, but that deck's not good, so I'm not even going to worry about that. <laughs> well, yeah. well. Like 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 these Disdainful Strokes that are in Raph's sideboard, should those mm -hmm. be in? Uh, no. The deck no. cast Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, I suppose. Goldspan Dragon is a problem, but I don't know. I kind of like the idea of just let's go as fast as we can and kill Maddie before that even becomes a consideration. Sure. I I, I, like, I think that's what makes this interesting is you look at a card like Disdainful Stroke and it's like, I just lost a Goldspan Dragon. I have an answer to Goldspan Dragon in my sideboard. And Raph is an all-time Hall of Fame level Magic player, mm -hmm. and he's not even bringing that card in. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I just find it really interesting in so far as how much has he and other players played against this strategy coming into this weekend? Well, let's see if we can get the job done here on Raph Levy's side of things. Takes like the opening hand, no green mana to speak of, but an otherwise pretty good-looking hand to consider keeping. I think <sighs> I think you, you got to send it. You can't play yeah. without green. And your Magdas in this matchup, 
I, I'm not going to say they're always going to die, but I think they're going to die a very high percentage of the time. Yeah. So I don't think you can keep it. This this is better. Yeah. That's an itty bitty bit better. So uh, Raph will be a little happier with that, I think. Still not thrilled, though. But one thing I will say about the Jeskai Mutate deck, when I saw Frank Carson's article about it and the explanation of how to do it, I went into a fight with Sparky because I didn't want to subject anyone else on the ladder to me trying to figure out how the heck this deck works. <laughs> so there's me against Sparky. Sparky's like, oh no, look at you go. And I'm just like, don't kill me while I do this, please. Well, hold on a minute. You don't want to subject anyone else to this, but you're fine putting Sparky through it? This is what Sparky's purpose in life is, Cedric. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I think we need to have a little chit chat with old Sparky there. Oh, I'm sure Sparky will be fine about it. I never actually killed Sparky. I just wanted to see how the cards worked. <laughs> so rude. Sparky, mm. we feel for you. Hashtag Sparky. Why are you going to get that trend going? See, the Twitch chat knows. Oh, Sparky has seen much worse. Sparky, I don't know. Sparky has been used know. by many a content creator. So okay. It's, it's, it's fine. Okay. Remember, Cleve's going to get shipped back here for Ralph Levy, who's going to kick things off with a Jaspera Sentinel. On the other side of the board, we have several ways to deal with pesky little critters, including Cinderclasm, that can take care of most of the creatures in Ralph's deck. Bonecrusher Giant is drawn off the top there. Unfortunately, no one-two punch of Magda into another one-drop, so Jaspera Sentinel is going to do its beatdown thing again, as we saw in the first game. I think we're probably just going to, are we just going to fire off this stomp main phase to ensure it resolves? It looks like the answer is yes. I think that's pretty smart. Uh, not entirely sure what counterspell uh, Mighty might have in a spot like that, but just to ensure that your thing does resolve, I think it's pretty smart. I guess it could be like an unsubstantiate or something, so. Mm. Arc channel pathway drawn off the top. Won't need any of the blue sides. So if anyone's wondering what the uh, pathways are for, it is for the disdainful strokes in the sideboard. Oh boy. All right. Bonecrusher Giant's going to get taken care of with the Red Cap Melee. Two points of damage to face. Down to 14. Just a 14 turn clock with a Jasper Sentinel. You can do it, buddy. No, it's, it's, it's on Cherry at this game. The oh, yes. Cadillac is going to have to get some work <laughs> done this game. Now, to the Cadillac's credit, it, it kills pretty fast. It does. So that's it a does. good thing. Cinderclasm, on the other hand, though, also kind of ruins that plan. Also, kills, al also kills fast. Yeah. But kills fast in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what are we gonna do here for Maddie? He has the option to run out of Vadrock. That's okay. gonna be his go-to for the Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty large. Oh boy. Okay. Cadillac's coming on down, and this is hello, yes please, for uh, Maddie in terms of getting that Cinderclasm fired off. Before yeah. the cat car can start making more kittens. Yeah, this is an awesome, awesome time for Cinderclasm. It's a great card to have. Cinderclasm this turn and then into a Goldspan Dragon the next turn. That's pretty yeah. nasty. Yeah, and if you're Raf, you really need to draw that fifth land so you can play an Elder Dark Raf. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves right now, but um, Maddie is in what appears to be a pretty good spot. Yeah, and the unfortunate thing as well, once this board goes bye-bye, there's no second source of red mana for Mythos of Vadrock to take care of the flyers either. Yep, it's a really, really good point. At least not yet. I mean, be best draw in Raph's deck might just be untapped red source mm -hmm. next turn. Like, if you're, if you're just thinking about what's his best possible to get himself back in this game, if you're rooting for him, I think that might be what it is. Oh, so just passing the turn back, there is a forest, so we will be able to deploy the Elder Gargaroth. Yeah, this turn, this turn you can go pre-combat Gargaroth, activate the Cadillac, mm -hmm. give beatdowns that way. Because he will be able to respond to the Cinderclasm. I'm interested to see when we're going to fire it off, though, for Maddie. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious about what Raph is going to play around in this spot, too. Like, Because is, is Raph going to go to combat first, or is he going to say, play Gargaroth pre-combat pre via the Despair Sentinel? I guess I guess fifth land means that he doesn't need the despair sentinel to get this mm -hmm. done, but he could just play Gargaroth and queue queue up the chariot that way. But okay, and then on Maddie's side of things, what he actually wants to have happen is he actually wants the chariot to attack. Yeah, okay, because this the Vadrox is, is for, has first strike. Yep. So you have the chariot attack. 
He blocks the chariot. First strike damage, three damage on the chariot. Then Cinder Class and away all your stuff. So that's yeah. what he's up to. Yeah. And he's going to get, it looks like, all of it but the Gargaroth. This, yeah, yeah, he, he should get, yeah, he should get all of it except for the Gargaroth here. That's, that's a pretty sick turn. That's pretty good. So here comes Essica's chariot in. The cats are not going to attack because of that 3-3. Three, three. Now, does Raph suspect any shenanigans in hand? I bet he suspects many, but at this point, you got to try and just deliver the beats when you can. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a tough attack here because one, one thing I actually don't love about this attack is you are playing against a deck that has a lot of red-based removal, mm -hmm. right? Because even if it isn't Cinderclasm, it could be Spikefield Hazard, it could be Scorching Dragonfire. So, like, you, you have a 3-3 three, three first striker against a 4-4, four, four, like... This should just go well for Matty a lot of the time. It's going to go insane for him this turn instead. Yeah. But I feel like it's going to go well for him like a heavy percentage of the time. Yeah, this is a very good turn here. A very good result for Matty Kuisman. Just able to wipe the majority of the board. Elder Gargaroth, though, is another problem he's going to have to find a way to deal with. But so one thing he can do is get an attack in here with a Goldspan Dragon without having the Elder Gargaroth able to block. Yeah. So we need we need red source more than life itself, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I'm curious if he's gonna race here. No, Vadrock can block. Vadrock can block the six six, and then oh, Scorching yeah, is... Dragonfire can take care of it. That is a pathway. It is. It's the red one, I think. Yeah. Yep. Lava glide pathway on the back of that. I'll tell so you what. That's those, that's those one pathways. way to deal with those uh, pesky birds. Yeah. So if you go to the Mythos, you can deal you can deal five damage divided as you choose among any number of creatures and or planeswalkers. Yeah. Yeah, but which one do you want to kill? I mean, the dragon is the the Goldspan dragon is probably more problematic. I guess I guess you just kill Goldspan pre combat because then they can't sack the treasure for two mana. Yeah. And so then there's no scorching dragon fire. Yeah, there's okay. no no concern of that. Well, maybe not. <laughs> this is fun. Listen, this, this is fun. It is fun. At this point, raflavy has got the biggest creature on the battlefield. That also makes other creatures and draws a bunch of cards. So, yeah. you know, well, that, this is fine. Okay. okay. Cool. So now we're free and clear for takeoff for the Elder Gargaroth. Yeah, what do we do with that thing, though? Draw? Make a 3-3? Three, three? I would be inclined to draw to try and find more answers for these threats. Yeah. I mean, creatures on the ground add to your power attacking. They're not doing any blocking, though. It just depends what mode Raph is in. Are we in attack or are we in protect mode? Yeah, that's a really, really, really good question. That whole mythos, uh, the, the mythos, like, what do you target there? Like, it's so easy for us to say, right? Like, you, you just kill the Goldspan Dragon, then the Scorching Dragon fires off, and then you have a 6-6. Six, well, six, no, 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 but, but if you target the dragon, though, it gets another treasure, so... That's a really good point, too. No, that's, that's an excellent point. Pesky that's dragon. That's an excellent point. B. That's, That's not what we want to see. But down to eight. Ooh, oh, fire prophecy just... and scorching dragon fire. That's really good. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh goody. Oh, that's a card. Express Federation is gonna go first and foremost, though. Let's see if we can find an untapped land. We don't need one though to be able to do scorching dragon fire and fire prophecy. I'd love to see what Maddie is looking at here. Yeah, that would be great if we can see that top screen. Get an idea of what's going on over there. This is a game in which I don't think the mutate combo is going to work itself into the equation. I'm looking at Maddie's clock right now. It's it's 7.30 and ticking down. Still think there's plenty of time for him to finish this game, so I don't think we have to worry about the beat Raph Levy and beat the timer type of thing. I am curious if you're supposed to lead with Iteration here as opposed to just going Scorch and Dragonfire, then Fire Prophecy, and save Iteration, but regardless, it looks like Explosive Iteration has been added to the hand. We'll see the mystery card that's put in Exile. There's a spike field hazard, so that can target the dragon and make extra treasures. I'm not sure if that's the way that he wants to go right now, though. But yeah, still can do fire prophecy, scorching dragon fire. Get rid of this Gargaroth. Don't let it attack, or sorry, don't let it block <clears throat> or attack the following turn. Going for another expressive iteration. Okay. Yeah, to totally fine just because you have the dragon making all the treasures, and so you have all that mana. Yes. So Still still fine. Still yeah. have the mana available to us. All right, finds the land he was looking for. That Cinderclasm was nuts. 
<laughs> yeah. That is so good. And there goes your board. Yeah. That would kill those zoo creatures you mentioned earlier, huh? Let me tell you, one of the worst questions your opponent can ask you in a situation like that is first strike damage. And it's like, <laughs> uh, uh, why? Who wants to know? <laughs> why are you asking? <laughs> Uh oh, what are we, we're targeting. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, oh, we're making some. Oh no, mana. are we comboing off? I think we're gonna. All right, let's do it. Vadrock, Apex of Thunder on the stack here. We're gonna mutate. What can we get back? There's Red Cap Melee, Spike Field Hazards, Expressive Duration. There's not that much good stuff in the bin yet, though, so I'm curious where we're we going with this. I mean, we get a, we get a 4 2 first striker. We might be iterating again. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm with you. I'm curious where we're going to go. I just like to, you know, a, a lot of the time I know exactly where the game's going to go or very close to it. This is one of those times I got no idea. <laughs> and I just get to watch like everybody else. It is fun to watch combos going off. Now, he doesn't he doesn't have unsubstantiate this time mm -hmm. like he did previously. Now, he he still has enough mana and everything else to just kill the Gargross. So that's yes. not an issue. We're going to move to combat here. Okay. Oh, is, ooh, I want to kill that before it blocks so badly. What if the card off the top is exactly what Raph needs to win? I don't know what that card is. Is he playing Runner Fouls? No, not in this list. I mean, you got a snap block, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's so easy for me to say when I see that Raph has like nothing. And so you can make the argument like he just wants to keep his Gargaroth around. Wow, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good call. It's so easy for me to say, like, just it's gonna snap die now, there. though. Yep. I mean, I mean, either way, it was gonna die. But what's on top of the library is what I want to know. So, let's see if we even get a turn back here for Wrath Levy, or if we're able to do some more shenanigans. Uh, doesn't uh, actually hold on. Dragon has first strike because of the mutate. Yes. Never mind. I mean, you could you could certainly make an argument for block to draw a card because you think your thing's going to die mm -hmm. but it's not going to win in combat so no. i rewind that a little oh oh does that do anything i mean you get to steal the dragon and get to mm. make some treasures beyond that mm. it's not the best draw there do we save that uh, red cap melee is not great maddie <clears throat> you could see the oops there of that expressive iteration went bye-bye that would have been a great card to just unlock the top of the library a little bit yeah okay okay bit of an oopsie so now it's a top deck battle between these two players time is running out a little bit for maddie he's on four and a half minutes but i do think this game will end fairly before that becomes a factor this game is a mess and i love it <laughs> it's a I hot do. mess Okay, so Song Mad Treachery versus Red Cap Melee. Highly doubt that uh, Maddie's gonna Red Cap Melee his own creature here. Yeah, but, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't see it happening. Raph's quite happy getting four points of damage in while the going is good and get a treasure off of it too. And so now I'm thinking, okay, what's what's Raph's best draw now? I mean, I don't think that Song Mad Treachery was bad. Let's see what the draw is here. Prismari Command, that's gotta be good. That's good. Yeah, get some get some extra cards off the top. Yeah, that, that can't be bad. That card's too good for it to be a bad draw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first things first, get the easy thing out of the way. Four points of damage in, down to eight goes Raph. No response. There is a Jaspera Sentinel that's going to meet its end to a Prismari Command. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that thing, that can die a myriad of ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might just get flattened by the dragon, maybe mm -hmm. an opportunity to chump block. <laughs> Who knows? The Prismari Command going to go for the two damage as well as the draw two, discard two. Oh, that's, there's a Vadrock. I gotta think be, that's got to be it. That's got to be something worth noting. Like, <laughs> I have to imagine the game ends now. Oh, yeah, let's uh, let's mutate because there's another Vadrock underneath that dragon. So yep. we'll be able to get back two spells. Having the Prismari Command available is just chef's kiss. What an awesome, awesome deck. It's pretty darn cool. I've got to admit. There's the good game from Raph. Is he going to make him click through all the things? I mean, let's just do it for, for good time's sake here, shall we? The Prismari Command and Expressive Iteration able to be cast for free, courtesy of the two Vadrox Apex of Thunders. 
There is a Rogan Trium as well as Fire Prophecy. Not the best cards to find, but not too terrible either. Okay. Smart so McQuand. What are we going? We're going like probably two damage upstairs, draw two discard too, yeah. Yeah. So two damage upstairs. We need one more burn spell. How about a dragon? Or just another dragon. How's dragon? That seems sound? good. Yeah. That work, that work for you? Double dragon. Please and thank you. All right. There you go. That's going to do it. Matty Kuizma is going to pick up the victory here against Ref Levy. Dragon power. Good job, Jeskai Mutate. What an absolute treat that was. Look at his face. You can tell he is very relieved to have won that one. A little hot under the collar there, I think. <laughs> well, you know, this is... Oh, man. I can, I, I'm excited to talk. This is one of my favorite <laughs> things about Tournament Magic. It's when you take a deck like Jeskai Mutate, or a deck that's a little bit under the radar,